Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maureen O'Connor from Quilter 7 in Northbrook, Illinois, and I am the Opinionated Quilter. Today's episode, number 69, is Enough with the Crumb Quilts, again. Way back in episode 13, we did this quilt here, using all one and a half by two and a half inch pieces, except for the center square. Many of my commenters, I shouldn't say many, a few commenters said they didn't like the columns. The columns were put in because these were so busy that if we put this one next to this one, it was just too much. So we used the uh, vertical sashing to calm the quilt down. I have now made another version and I'm calling it Better Than Crumbs. And it's this one here. And rather than using a sashing, I used a frame on one block and no frame on the other block. And that kept it calm and also kept cohesiveness um, throughout the quilt. Let's show you how we make it. Over here, I have the A block and the B block. And if you went back to the episode 13, we showed you how to make it. It's very simple. You only have a two and a half inch square of whatever your accent fabric is or background fabric, whatever you want to call it, for the center. And then the white frame for the B block. But then all it is is the same size piece. You just cut one and a half by two and a half inch pieces to finish to one by two over and over and over and over and over again. And you piece single pieces on either side of your two and a half inch square, then two together on either side of that, two again three here, three here, four here. And this one in the B block starts with instead of the two and a half inch white square, accent square, it's two of the one and a half by two and a half inch pieces put together. And then it proceeds the same rest of the way. One each on either side, twosies, a threesie, and then simply the white frame. And what I did in mine, because I'm always trying to use scraps, is my white is not one all white on white. It's a whole pile of scraps that were, um, some were produced by the shop and some came in donation boxes. So um, hopefully this will be a, I shouldn't say hopefully, this will be a Project Linus quilt at some point in the future once it gets quilted. But it's really super simple construction. Now in our original block, it was a six inch block. So it stopped at the threes here. We didn't do this extra last ring around it. So you can do the quilt in either the six inch size or the eight inch size. And I will have the pattern um, up on my website. We'll have the link there and we'll have both directions for six inch and eight inch. And we will also have directions for the all A block version. That was this version, the number one one that is a six inch block. And we will also have the eight inch block version with an A block and a B block. So the one pattern will give you many options to use up your scraps. Now, one thing I always say about scrap quilts um, is the cohesiveness. Why I like it better than crumb quilts. And normally you have to add something to make it cohesive. If you don't want to add something, you could do just the A block that we did in the first version and do the, the uh, two 
two and a half by one and a half inch pieces to make your two and a half inch square for the center. And just do that all the way through with no accent. Now I caution you on this because if you did lots of prints like I did here, to me that just becomes too much and my eyes can't look at it. You need to have a theme you need to have enough things that are solids look like solids in it to make this work. This is not one that you would use crumb pieces for. That are things from um, 20 years ago, things that are current, um, 30s um, reproduction fabrics, Civil War fabrics. To me, that would just look awful. And of course, again, that's just my opinion. If, if you want to throw those all together, that's your quilt. You get to do what you want. In my opinion, if you're going to try to do something like this, you need a theme, you need a color palette, you need enough things to keep it calm. Because if you don't, you're definitely going to need to either put sashings or frames or something in there that's gonna calm the busyness down. Okay, now time to go to war against crumb quilts. The argument on crumb quilts are that you don't have to do the prep work. To do these quilts, you do have to cut the pieces. But I would argue that I would rather do all the prep work first and get it all done be finished with it, clean everything up, have all my pieces and baggies and ready to go. Crumb quilters take a piece out, oh, that's too big or that doesn't have the right angle and then they have to cut it and it's so stop, so stop, cut, stop, so stop. Once you get your baggies all ready to go, it's sit down at the machine and go boom, 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 boom and it's so much fun, at least in my book. How do we make the prep easy? Right here. This ruler, and I know you've seen me use it before, and there are other brands. This is the one I like, the Stripology ruler, Gundren Erla. Um, she uses it all the time. Now, most of my real scrappy pieces have already been cut up and are bagged and ready to go, but I just brought out a little sampling of the kinds of things that I pull out to cut. And sometimes you have a nice piece like this that's a full width of fabric. And I would probably just take a regular ruler and cut this into um, the one and a half inch strips. And then I have pieces that look like this. Can anybody tell what this is? could have been? A mask. I have lots of pieces, even in donation boxes, that I can tell masks were cut out of. I also have just weird pieces like this. I don't know if this was from a sleeve, from a, a pattern for a doll or a bear or whatever. I have smaller pieces that are nice rectangles or squares that aren't all eaten into like my mask piece. And then I just have weird shaped pieces like this. So whatever pieces I have, I want to get them into one and a half inch strips. So yes, I press. Things that are nice like this, I just cut all by themselves. And then the crazy stuff like this I just fold into some sort of manageable piece. I stack them up underneath of my ruler. And I would just cut using my slots on my ruler to get the one and a half inch pieces. Then once I have all the one and a half inch pieces, I lay them across this way. And I will do um, up to four layers, sometimes six, um, lay them across and probably four to five this way. And then, you know, she gives you the markings here. When you're doing two and a half, you're doing the um, square markings. And 
the one and a half cuts are the star markings. So once I have all the strips up here, I just go ahead, go in the slot, cut, cut, cut all the way across. I take the ruler off and I have these huge stacks. When I do one, it's probably a stack, oh, maybe at least about this high that you can get out of one go round. So it's not like you're cutting one two and a half by one and a half piece at a time. That would take forever. So the prep to me is not that bad, but that to me is the argument um, as far as prep is, yes, there's prep work, but it can be done fast and easy. Crumb quilting, no prep work, but you're doing it while you're sewing. And to me, that stops the flow of the sewing. That's why one of the reasons I like this kind of a quilt rather than a crumb quilt. And of course the other, which we've talked about already, is the, um, the cohesiveness and what you put into it, color palette versus throw everything in. And again, it's your quilt. You, you get to do what you want with your quilt. But I think this quilt is absolutely gorgeous. All of this is scraps. The only thing I added, a quarter yard of this purple, and it worked great because there was some of the purple in the quilt, and then this stripe, a half a yard. So these blocks finished to eight inches. So this one, the body of it was 40 by 56. I set it five by seven. And then we added uh, two and a half, five, six, seven inches. So 47 by 63. So a great lap size quilt. And some traumatized kid who needs comfort in their life, it'll be great. We'll, we'll use batting that is leftover pieces. You want to keep the same fiber content, same brand, same fiber content, same batting. We serge them together. We'll find something in the donation box. If there's not a big enough piece, we'll piece it together. So you can give a really good gift for just really basically your labor and a quarter yard and a half a yard. What a bargain. It's always so satisfying to finish a quilt that's made with nothing new that you bought. So three quarters of a yard almost nothing new that you bought. So if you like making crumb quilts, go for it. If not, this is a fantastic alternative. Again, I've got multiple versions. If you like this um, quilt, please like, share, and subscribe. And drop me a comment. Tell me what you like. And until next time, happy sewing.